Hey guys, Michael here with Do It Justice. Welcome to today's video. As you guys may have seen on last week's video, we're going to be changing a lot of things when it comes to the freshwater system. Uh, that includes an instant hot water heater. We're going to be updating the way we filter our fresh water. But today I'm going to share with you three things that we're changing. We're going to be replacing the faucet in the kitchen sink. We're going to be replacing the P-trap that's underneath the sink. But first things first, I'm standing next to the shower where we've got to add a water stopper valve. And I'll explain more about that here in just a second. So as far as our shower head goes, we have the Oxygenix two gallon per minute low flow shower head. We actually really like this shower head. The only problem with it is this black stopper valve that's actually built into the shower head doesn't fully shut off the water when you're lathering up during your shower and it leaks water out and we don't like wasting water. To solve that problem, I bought this stopper valve. Basically, I'm going to install this on the shower faucet, but the unfortunate thing is I just tried it and there's not enough room between the faucet and the shower wall for this little knob, this little um, stopper lever to spin and twist on. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to remove the shower faucet so I can attach this piece, fully screw it on, and then reattach that shower faucet to the wall. Now, to get that done, I've got an access panel cut out behind the shower, so I'm gonna go back there and see what's behind there so I can get this shower faucet removed, get this thing installed, and then reattach the shower head, and we'll see how it works. So there's some screws on the other side of this faucet that I'm just loosening, not all the way, I'm not taking the faucet all the way off, I'm just loosening it enough so I can pull it out far enough to actually attach that stopper valve. Okay, so now that I have it far enough away from the wall, I'm just going to use this thing and screw it on just prematurely just to make sure that it's going to be an okay fit. And yep, it's going to fit snug up against that wall. So what I'm going to do before I officially secure it in is I'm going to use some of this Teflon plumber's tape uh, and wrap it counterclockwise around this attachment point um, so that when I screw this thing on, that plumber's tape is going to create a watertight seal for this stopper valve. Okay, now that that's officially attached, all I need to do is resecure that faucet against the wall by tightening the two nuts in the back. I'm also going to be attaching the hot and the cold water lines. After that's done, I'm going to reattach the Oxygenix shower head, test it out, and make sure that it works all right. Okay, I just got the water lines reattached, and I was actually thinking, you guys are probably wondering why we're not just shutting off the water at the hot and the cold lines like normal people. Just shut off the water, lather up, and then turn it back on to rinse. Well, it's good in theory, but our RV is very finicky when it comes to water temperature. It's either really, really hot or really, really cold. And if you guys can relate to that, hit us up in the comments below. Hopefully it's not just our RV, but it's something we have to deal with. So that's why we bought this little $8 valve. The stopper valve is going to allow us to set the perfect temperature, shut, shut off all the water without having to modify how hot or cold it is, and then re-turn it on once we want to rinse off. So it's just going to make our lives, when we're living in this full time, it's just going to make it a little bit more convenient. We'll see how it works. Let's go ahead and uh, turn on the water, get the shower head attached, and let's see if it actually stops the water. So after you turn on your pump, to test the new valve, you're going to have water in the lines. It's really important that you check out all of the connections that you just screwed in to make sure there's no external leaks, uh, small drips of water that are coming out from those connections because they can cause problems in the future. So make sure all of your connections are tight and as soon as you're done then you can freely check that stopper valve, make sure that it works. Ours works absolutely perfect. It completely stops the water flow to the shower head and we are very happy with how it turned out. Okay, so the P-trap underneath the sink needs to be replaced. The current one that we have has a split O-ring uh, that I over-tightened with a tool. So what I need to do is I just need to replace that piece. What you're going to want to do is make sure to take this thing off first and empty it out. The P-trap will have residual water inside of it, so make sure to take that off and be careful with it and just dump it outside. Okay, I've got the old P-trap off and I've done the due diligence of cleaning off all the old Teflon tape that was on this pipe, this black pipe here. So just make sure to clean it off, clean up the area so that you have a nice watertight seal when you install the new P-trap. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this pipe with Teflon tape, get the new P-trap installed and make sure that it's not leaking. So let's go ahead. 
All right, the new P-trap is on. That was actually really simple. I'm gonna go ahead and run the water now to make sure that there's no leaks coming out of the P-trap. Let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm doing now is I'm checking around the seals and I'm also running my fingers at the bottom side of this P-trap just to make sure there's no drips coming out. It does not appear that there's any. So we've stopped that slow leak underneath the sink. So let's move on to the faucet up top. We're gonna to replace that and we're so excited to share this new faucet with you guys. Okay, so this is the brand new kitchen faucet that we got for our kitchen sink. This is the only faucet that we have in the RV outside of the shower. And the reason we wanted this faucet is because as you can see, it's got a much taller uh, spout on it. Uh, the current one that we have just wasn't cutting it as far as being the maneuverability when trying to do dishes. So we needed something that was a little taller and this was only $30 on Amazon and it's actually relatively decent quality. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed in an RV as I'm sure you can understand, it's very hard to kind of show all of the stuff, the intricacies, because there's very tight spaces. We'll show you guys as much as we can, but essentially what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be removing the hot and the cold water lines from this old faucet. I'm gonna remove the old faucet and all of the silicone that was around the faucet, and then I'm gonna replace it with this one. All of these holes are standard, so this is gonna fit right inside the already pre-drilled holes inside of our countertop, and then I'm going to secure it with these nuts on the underside of the countertop. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'll show you guys a little bit more detail and then I cannot wait to see how this actually works after we're done. I've already shut off the water pump so I made sure to flip that off and it is very tight quarters down here. So I see the hot and the cold water lines. It may be tough to show you guys where it is but essentially what I'm gonna do is I am gonna take those hot and the cold water lines off and then make sure that I keep track of which one is which. So make sure to know which one's the hot and which one's the cold based on what your current setup is with your faucet. Here's a quick tip. After you shut off your pump in your RV or your water source, make sure to run the hot and the cold water lines before you even try to unscrew them because you're gonna relieve all that pressure out of those lines so you're not gonna be uh, spraying water all over the place. Make sure to do that before you unscrew the hot and cold water lines. But now that I've got that all done, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the old faucet and then replace it with the new one. All right guys, to get the old faucet off, I'm gonna use this new faucet as a visual. Basically what we have is we have these black nuts that are securing that faucet to the countertop. Um, underneath the sink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go underneath and unscrew those on both sides of the old faucet so I can remove it from the countertop. What we have left over is the old plastic gasket that's still attached to the countertop. It's attached to the countertop because we applied a bead of silicone around that after we had completed doing the countertop paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull that up and boom, there you go. That's the old gasket. Everything's officially off. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up the area, make sure that it's, there's no more silicone so that I can reattach the new faucet and then put a new bead of silicone around it. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm using my fingernail and I'm going around the original faucet uh, outline and I'm taking off all of the old silicone, the crumpling it off because silicone does not stick to itself. So if we wanted to put a new bead of silicone around the new faucet, um, we would have to make sure all of the old silicone is off so it actually attaches to the countertop. Um, and I'm also trying to be very careful because we did use a countertop paint on these countertops. So we used a Gianni granite countertop paint. If you haven't seen that video, make sure to check out that video here. But that's what you can see here. That's why there's the color difference. Okay, one thing you need to make sure that you do before you go ahead and tighten it on with the tightening nuts is you need to make sure that your cold line is on the right side and your hot line is on the left side. So with this one, it has a blue uh, underneath the handle right here and a red underneath the handle over there. So make sure that you have those correctly placed before you go ahead and tighten it onto the countertop. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it right now and make sure that it's set up in the spot that I want. Okay, one of the last things I'm gonna do for this project is I'm going to wrap a little plumber's tape and then reattach the hot and cold lines and then we'll be able to see if the faucet works. Okay, now I've got that plumber's tape on both sides and I'm just hand tightening the cold line right now. 
You look super uncomfortable. It is very uncomfortable. <laughs> All right, that one's nice and tight. Make sure this one's nice and tight. All right, woohoo! All right, they're both nice and tight. Let's go ahead and turn it on and make sure that it works. We're gonna flip on the water pump. Let's get it going. Okay, so I got the pump turned on and what I'm doing is I'm checking those seals that I just tightened up, the hot and the cold lines, to make sure there's no liquid that I can feel and both the hot and the cold feel dry. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna inspect the faucet before I even turn it on to make sure there's no leaking coming out. All right, so there's no leaks coming from the hot and cold lines or the faucet itself. So let's go ahead and turn this on. Are we ready? Yes. Okay, the instructions on the new faucet said to remove the aerator so that we could drain out the lines of the faucet, and I went ahead and did that, but I'm not going to install the new aerator back on. I'm actually going to install the old half gallon per minute aerator that we purchased for our old faucet. So that came off of here. I'm just going to go ahead and screw this onto here. It's not the exact same color. We have a chrome aerator versus a stainless steel like we bought for our faucet. But again, we're not about looks, we're about functionality here. And this faucet's going to work perfect for us. Um, one other thing I wanted to remind you guys, don't forget to put a silicone bead around the sink faucet as well as your uh, shower faucet. We're not going to do those tonight because it's getting too dark for us to see in here. So uh, I'm sure there's other videos online that will give best practices on how to do that. Um, but we hope you guys really liked this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button below. Also, drop us a comment. We love to hear from you guys. And as always, we will see you on the next video. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be unscrewing both of these on both the hot and cold water lines and it's going to fall down just like that, I hope. <laughs>